Hi, this is 7.5. We're looking at Taylor series now. With Taylor series, what's going to happen is that we want to get a polynomial that approximates some of the functions that we've seen before. And so with this, to get these approximations, we want to make sure that we do include a point, and the point should include, like if I'm making a good approximation around x value c, x equal to c, then that should be on the function and then also on the approximation. Now what we did was we also did this when we did tangent line approximations, but we want to have the same slope at that point too. So that's what we're doing is we're just doing these approximations to the curve. And so then p prime of c is, should be equal to f prime of c. Then to keep on, we just want more and more accuracy then we want p double prime of c to equal f double prime of c and so on. And so putting all this together gives us Taylor polynomial expansion. And so if f of x has derivatives of all orders, it can be approximated by the polynomial function as shown. So I'm not going to read all that, but that's what it is. Now if you notice, this piece right here, this is just the tangent line approximation. This is your y value, and then this is your slope, and then this is your x minus c, which is your x minus x1, whatever you want to call it. So that's your tangent line approximation. Then we get more accurate and more accurate, and successive derivatives will give us an increased value. This 3 will come out in front, and we've got to account for it, so that's why we get 3 factorial, 4 factorial, and so on. Notice that this is an nth degree Taylor polynomial, it has n plus 1 terms. One more term than the nth degree polynomial that we do have. Then when this is centered at a point c equal to 0, so that's like making a tangent line approximation at x equal to 0, the Taylor polynomial is called a McLaren polynomial, which can be written just with the 0 in there for your c value. It's a little bit cleaner. All right, let's go to an example, and we want to write the definition of a McLaren polynomial to find the fifth degree McLaren for f of x is equal to e to the x. So once again, it says fifth degree polynomial, so I'm going to end up with six terms. So I write down f of x, and this setup gives you a nice way to do this so you're nice and organized. f prime of x, oh, this is going to be the same all the way down because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So that wasn't so bad. And then f of 0, that would give me a 1. And then f prime of 0, oh, I'm going to get 1s all the way down as well. So now what we want to do is put this into the polynomial form that we have right here. So I'm just going to follow this pattern here. f of 0, what is f of 0? That's 1. And then it's going to be plus f prime of 0 times x. So I'm going to go f prime of 0, which is 1, times my x. And then I just continue on with this. f double prime of 0 would be 1 times. Then I need to do f double prime, uh, I'm sorry, the x squared divided by 2 factorial. So this is x squared divided by 2 factorial. And so on with this. So I continue to write it out. And this is fifth degree polynomial, and then I have my six terms. And then we can clean that up a little bit if we wish. And this one has to be memorized. You have to know that e, e, uh, e to the x is approximately this polynomial, fifth degree wise, and then you also will have to extend it later, and we'll show you how to do that. So if I write this all out in a continuing pattern that goes on forever, this is what e of x is. And this is exactly what it is, so I can put an equal sign. Before, when I just did five, uh, fifth degree, I needed to put an approximate because that was short of all the terms that we needed to be exactly e to the x. So be careful with your equal signs when you're doing these problems. This one continu continues on forever, so that is what e to the x is, so equal sign there. So now the general form of the Taylor and McLaren polynomials can be extended to what we call the Taylor and McLaren series. And so that just means that we're going to take this as far as we can. So f of x is equal to f of c plus, 
Now we take the derivative of f prime of c times x minus c plus f double prime of c all over 2 factorial. And then I'm going to have x minus c raised to the second. I'm going to continue this on. So I wrote this out. This is the general term here. And then I also include plus dot, dot, dot. That's where we get the series rather than just calling it the polynomial. McLaren series just means that we're centered around 0. So I'll write that down and come back to you. So then here's the McLaren centered around 0 McLaren series. Now what I did too is I rewrote this one here up here because this one in blue doesn't show up so well. Sorry about that. So I rewrote that. Okay, these formulas allow us to form a power series for functions that cannot be written as geometric power series. So it gives us a lot more tools to work with. Well, let's try an example here. Example number two. We want to go ahead and use the definition of a Taylor polynomial to find the fourth order Taylor polynomial and then go ahead and find the Taylor series for f of x is equal to cosine of x centered at c equal to pi. So this is a nice way to set you up is with this chart. So now, first of all, I look at f of x. f of x would simply be cosine of x. Then I do f prime of x, and f prime of x would be negative sine of x. And just go down the line here, negative cosine of x. Then we're back at sine of x, and then we're at cosine of x again. And so fourth order means that I take the fourth derivative, and uh, I can find these values now for at pi. So we're centered not at 0 anymore. We're centered at pi. And so if I do f of pi, cosine would be negative 1. And I'll fill these in. Because the sine of pi is going to be 0, cosine of pi would be 1. And then we got the, I'm sorry, negative 1. And so we got this one here. Okay, so those are the values that we do have. So if I want to do the polynomial, the polynomial would be, first of all, my f of pi, so I got negative 1, and then I'm going to go plus my next value, which would be the 0 times 0 times my x minus c value. But in this case, c is pi, so I'm going to put in my pi there. And you might say, well, why did I put that 0 in there? Because I need kind of a holding place to make sure I keep track of my factorial. So down to the next one, I'm going to will be 1. So I have my 1 here. 1 times x minus pi divided by 2 factorial. Now, you got to keep track of all these things. So when I have the 2 factorial, I'm going to have the squared up here. And then the next term is going to be plus 0 divided by 3 factorial, x minus pi to the third. And then the last one would be the negative 1. So negative 1, x minus pi, raised to the fourth, all divided by 4 factorial. A lot of little pieces there that you got to keep track of, so just be careful when you're going. Now when we write the polynomial here, the Taylor series, we just want to do the same exact thing, but continue on forever, and we're going to disregard the zero. So I'm just going to write this out, pause, and you try it, and then I'll show you the answer. So there we go. That's the Taylor polynomial for that. I'm sorry, the Taylor series. Centered around pi, so that makes that little bit of difference when we're talking about these values here. So example three works off of the Taylor polynomial we just had, the fourth order. So this is how we write the fourth order polynomial. So then it does say, go ahead and approximate cosine of 3. So I take this and just plug in 3 wherever I see my x. So I'm going to get negative 1. I'm going to skip this one, plus 1 over 2 factorial, 3 minus pi, quantity squared. So I plugged it into there. I'm going to skip this one and plug it into here, minus 1, 4. 1 over 4 factorial, sorry, 
x minus pi raised to the fourth power. Oh, I need a 3 in there. Putting a 3 in. So if I crank this out and you put this into your calculator, you're going to get negative 0.989857. And if we do the actual cosine, the cosine of 3 is approximately negative 0.989999. Okay, so that's just from a few terms. We got quite a good approximation. Example number four. Use the definition of McLaren series for f of x is equal to sine of x. So then that means your c is equal to 0 when it says this Maclaurin. So if I take my f of x is equal to the sine, I'm going to do each one of the derivatives. So I rolled through those, and then now I'm going to find the value at each one of those at 0. So I don't use these values back here anymore. All I'm going to use are these here to set this up. So if I write it out, so if I write it out here, I get this, but then if I simplify, it's going to be x minus 1 over 3 factorial x cubed plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the fifth plus my dot, dot, dot. We're going to continue that one on forever. If I want to create a general term for this, which I should be able to do, I'm alternating, so I'm going to go negative 1 to the n minus 1. And then I have an odd exponent. How we represent an odd number is with a 2n plus 1 or a 2n minus 1. And then this is all over 2n minus 1 factorial, because that is going to be a, an odd number as well. And note that, and this is if we start with n equal to 1. So with example number 6, then, we want to find a power series for f of x, which is centered at c equal to 1. And then they tell me my initial value, and then they tell me each one of the derivatives at a value of 1, which is n factorial. So let's see if we can piece this together. So f of x is equal to f of c. That would be my 2 plus f prime of c. f prime of c, they tell me, is n factorial. So this would be my, whichever derivative I'm talking about, this would be 1 factorial, times my x minus c. So that's going to be x minus my value of 1. Plus, now I'm going to have 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial, and then this would be x minus 1 quantity squared. Plus 3 factorial, because the third derivative is based on this, so this would be over 3 factorial, x minus 1 quantity cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. Notice that all of these factorials will all cancel, and it'll be the same thing up for the next one, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, so on, because these are the derivatives that we do get, and so we're just going to end up with another approximation if we simplify this a little bit to be, oh, I can do this. I can start at... 1 and go x minus 1 raised to the n power and then go up to infinity. That's another way to write it too. So both of these are the... So this wraps up 7.5. I really appreciate you listening about Taylor series and McLaren series and the Taylor polynomials. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.